Governor, uh, thank you for being with us. You're welcome, Appreciate Robert. Appreciate you being here. Uh, it's a big week for you. It is. How does it feel? I mean, you're the longest serving governor in Texas history now. I just get up every day and, you know, go do my job and thank the good Lord that I have the opportunity to, uh, to serve. It is the best job in America. It uh, is the most stimulating thing I've ever done in my life. I get to come and participate in a great process that uh, now I've spent over 25 years of my life engaged in uh, and work with some of the most wonderful people, both state employees and obviously the members of the legislature who by and large or, uh, you know, come here, do their best to represent their districts and uh, collectively um, make Texas an even better place to live. So um, why would you not like it? It's still energized. It is a great and energizing thing for me. You talked uh, last week about the priority issues facing Texas, and a lot of people were wondering, scratching their heads, why, why didn't you put the budget issues some more at the forefront? Yeah, of the I, I think that goes without saying. Um, the budget's what we do here every two years. I mean, the idea that uh, I, I can't remember which former statewide elected official said it, but he said, uh, you know, the, the most important thing that you do every two years is uh, appropriate the money. Uh, everything else is poetry, I believe was his saying. Uh, and, and that's, I don't know whether it's poetry or not, but those other issues, and we have some important ones, but um, everyone in this state knows that our budget process is uh, the number one priority. You don't need to make it a, uh, an emergency issue, though. It'd, you know, it'd be like saying that uh, on Thanksgiving, uh, people decide uh, whether they're going to be wearing maroon or they're going to be wearing burnt orange. That's a given. Right. Uh, the eminent domain issue, why that particular one? Well, we've been working on it for quite a few years. And I made the commitment to uh, uh, private landowners, different groups, uh, whether it was the Texas uh, uh, Cattle Feeders Association, Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers, uh, that we were going to uh, make that issue a priority issue, get it out of the way, make sure it didn't get caught up in any uh, political maneuvering or what have you. You know, last session of the legislature, we had uh, a number of really good pieces of legislation that did not make it to my desk because of the logjam that was created at the uh, last few days of the legislative session. This is a really important issue for continued growth in Texas, uh, you know, whether it's uh, transportation infrastructure or whether it's continued development uh, of uh, economic um, projects. We need to get this one done uh, behind us. And most likely uh, it, will, uh, it will be in the form of a constitutional amendment as well. I don't know uh, exactly how the members want to finalize it, but uh, it's an important one for the state. Let's talk about that rainy day fund. It's pretty tempting, over $9 billion sitting there. Uh, do you think it should still sit there and we not touch it? Sure, uh, I, I do think it needs to sit there. Uh, it's just like your savings. Uh, and uh, my bet is that most Texans, uh, although we're facing some economic strife, uh, you know, Texas is doing better than any other state. But you can't uh, be the number one exporting state in the nation. You can't be the uh, state that's as globally engaged economically as Texas is. Uh, you know, we're home to more Fortune 1000 companies than any other state. So you bet you uh, a national, international recession is going to impact Texas. So Texans aren't getting into their savings by and large. Uh, you know, there may be some folks that it's very tempting to go take that money, spend it on recurring events, a, current, a recurring cost, if you will. And I think that's bad policy for them personally, and I think it's bad public policy for Texas to take that money out of that rainy day fund to help make it through uh, a, a difficult budget session. But I think we can balance our budget, prioritize what's important, fund that with their available revenue, and leave those dollars in the rainy day fund where they are. Um, California and Michigan are the places that, uh, amongst others, where there's a real rainy day. I would suggest to you in Texas that's not the case. And you were talking about Illinois, a few, uh, really criticizing them for raising uh, right. income taxes. Well, the idea that you raise, uh, fortunately, we don't have an income tax, and it's the 
it's the best thing we've never done uh, is to uh, not have an income tax in this state because you see exact the, 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 the lure, the tendency of, gosh, we just don't want to make the hard decisions. Robert, one of the things that really came across during this last election cycle was Texans stood up all across the state and said, we want you making thoughtful, principled decisions about spending. And we don't want you spending a bunch of money we don't have on programs that, quite frankly, we can't afford. And to take the money out of the rainy day fund uh, just to make it easier to serve and go through this session of the legislature, I don't think that's leadership, and I don't think that's what the people said very clearly and very loudly on November the 2nd. 